you already mentioned uh, that there are several actors um, in the region. As we're located and we do this uh, interview in Brussels, uh, months and a year now, uh, the, the crisis in Ukraine or the Russian aggression in Ukraine has been the main topic um, in Brussels. Um, how has this crisis manifested itself, talking about the security sector now uh, in the Sahel? I have to say that this is a question that uh, the Sahelians ask me all the time. Uh, are you changing your uh, approach to the Sahel uh, given the crisis in Ukraine? My answer is no, we are not changing our ap approach. We are continuing to invest the same amount of money that has already been allocated. We are continuing the, our dialogue with you, our cooperation, and we are trying to find the adequate responses to your needs and to, you, to your requests. The real problem is that uh, we also have a political level in this sense. We know very well that it is important for us to uh, to express our opinion and to, to bring our arg uh, uh, arguments to make the countries of the Sahel understand that the war in Ukraine is not a question of uh, uh, that relates only to the European Union is a question of global order we know that uh, the effects of the war in Ukraine also in the Sahel have been very serious for instance increase in the inflation in um, difficulty to get um, cereals and grain uh, there have been a lot of consequences in terms of uh, um, food security and uh, affecting the population of course so you can imagine how serious the, the, the impact of this uh, war is on on the Sahel and also as you very very you very well know there is a campaign of Russia to uh, convince the countries of the Sahel that their model is the pro the, 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 the most profitable one and also uh, the fact that Mali for instance accepted the presence of the um, group um, of Wagner on its territory which has really caused um, serious uh, consequences because we were obliged given that this was a red line for the European Union to interrupt our support to the country in terms of uh, our military missions and uh, military support. So as you can see this is a very serious issue. The most important thing is that our narrative must be strong enough to make them understand. Not everybody is understanding the importance of this uh, war and its impact at global level. And uh, of course, uh, this is our task, difficult task, to uh, make uh, all the countries aware and to work with them to find a new um, balance in, uh, of, of power, especially in the region and in the, with the European Union. You mentioned your arguments as well, that uh, your, your message to the Sahelian leaders is, is clear. Um, I would like to turn the table um, other way around, because as you know, many countries have been directly in infected. Uh, Poland, for example, as one country neighboring Ukraine by the war. What is your message to the representatives of these countries who might have strong opinions about the Russian involvement in the Sahel and so on? What, what do you tell the, the representatives of these countries? We cooperate very closely, of course, uh, with uh, every country of the European Union. And uh, what I would like to say, which is very important, never in history there has been so much attention by the, all the 27 member states of the European Union towards the, the Sahel as there is now. I, at the beginning of my position when I started in uh, July 2021, I was uh, uh, somehow surprised to see how engaged were the, Bal the Baltic states and how engaged were the uh, Eastern European countries that I actually know very well. And uh, then, of course, looking at their perspective, it's understandable. It's very important for them to be present because the issue of Russia was already there uh, before the, the, the war in Ukraine. But also the fact that, that the, the, the Sahel is, as I always say, the real southern border of Europe. And nobody uh, more than the Baltic states or the uh, Eastern European states can understand how important it is to be present and to bring uh, a particularly positive model of democracy to work on with the countries of the Sahel who want actually um, societies based on so state of law, access to basic services, welfare state, 
in contrast with other projects and proposals that do not take into account this, but just uh, the uh, exploitation of resources and no development at all. So I am grateful to the countries of the Eastern of Eastern Europe and especially uh, also to the, the to the Baltic states and all the states that actually bring their own important perspective to this discourse for the Sahel because their contribution is absolutely fundamental. And as I said, I really very much appreciate their, their engagement. You mentioned uh, the Baltic states and Eastern European countries as, uh, as a good example. And, and like you know, the, the, the Baltic states were also taking part in the Takuba, the, the special mission um, uh, in the Sahel. I would like to do, turn a little bit still back on the, uh, on the Wagner point, which you mentioned earlier. As we know now, also the European Parliament uh, published in its really yearly review of the common security and defense policy. Um, a list of countries which uh, employ Wagner soldiers. Mali was mentioned there as well. Uh, Qatar was mentioned there. And, and there's also been talks about Burkina Faso and so on. Um, as a result of this, you could say that some of the countries have been more hesitant. We see that the Czech Republic has pulled uh, its troops from the UTM Mali training mission. Uh, we see also that they closed their embassy. Of course, maybe you can say that the Czech Republic is not otherwise so involved. How do we re-engage in this, specifically talking about Mali now, or, or the countries where Wagner is, uh, is present, how do we re-engage with this region so that we don't leave it to the Russians? I would say that we never stopped being engaged, and this is good news for all of us. Uh, it, in my job, which is quite challenging, as you can understand, I always concentrate very much on uh, keeping the European Union member states uh, focused on the Sahel and engaged on the Sahel, and also the countries of the Sahel oriented towards the European Union. And uh, this is um, a tough uh, task, of course, but I have to say that in terms of engagement, um, recently in the month of January, there were many discussions within the European Union, and no, there is no one single country that doubts that we need to be engaged in the, in the Sahel for a number of reasons. Also because uh, there is a, a risk of spillover towards the coastal states, for instance, in the Gulf of Guinea. There, is, there are many effects to the north in the Maghreb, uh, the effect that obviously um, come from uh, the reinforcement of uh, terrorism in territories that is difficult to control by the part of the countries of the Sahel. So you can imagine how much it is necessary to keep engaged. So I would, I would, I would say that what is happening now, also because of the war in Ukraine, is a, a sort of a redefinition of our engagement to make it more effective and especially to make our partnership with the countries of the Sahel uh, more solid for the future, able to uh, resist to the, to the threats which are really particularly serious. And I just want to make uh, simple sentences by saying the, the epicenter of all the phenomena, the negative phenomena in, in, uh, in the region and uh, the phenomena that have an effect on the European Union is in the Sahel. This is why, of course, we can never abandon the region. What, we, what do we do? We keep to the dialogue ongoing. We keep uh, the, always the open door. We, I must say, we have a, a real, uh, let's say, uh, rich and uh, uh, frequent dialogue with the countries of the Sahel. I myself, I go there all the time and I speak to everybody. And also, as regards Mali, our uh, approach was, since the beginning of the crisis with the, with the country, was to to uh, keep our principles, for instance, no Wagner, which is a red line for us, but at the same time keeping an open door because it's important uh, to uh, see whether we can uh, make uh, Mali come out of that, the isolation in which it is actually confining itself. So as, as you can see, it's a lot of activities and uh, I think this is the only way by which we can obtain good results.